farming page, Dreamer, you know, please. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's been a while since I made a farming video and I think many new and returning players question the usability of the older videos, so no need to worry, this guide will trump them all. Farming as a whole will include not just adventure runs but raid, but I will not be talking about raid in this video and will make updated raid guides soon. Timestamps and subtitles are provided, so do check them out if you need. We will answer the following big questions as usual, what to farm, why farm, where farm, how farm, can't farm? And farming is no longer just about earning rubies. There are far more things now in the game that you need to get through adventure. Just to briefly go through each one, rubies mainly are used for gacha, buying keys and re-rolling for mythical awakened jewel substats. They can also be used to upgrade special traits and polish mythical awakened items but please don't. Soul shards are used to unlock soul skills in fighter's soul. Gold is used for too many things right now and almost everything right now. Fodders are needed to generate rubies. Light crystals are used to change jewel main stats. Magic crystals are used for unlocking the secondary subslot for accessories. So how do you get them? You earn 3 rubies by leveling up heroes from level 1 to 40. Ideally with a team of 5 you can get 15 rubies each round because each father dead or alive will still grow in level at the end of each round. However this will not be the best way because if you try to level up 5 father units it will take a significant amount of time to clear each stage because these units have low stats. And they will die. So instead of taking 2 to 3 minutes to earn 15 rubies, you should instead be using one main farmer with 4 fodders to make this process much faster. You can then earn 12 rubies in a far shorter period of time. Moving on, soul shards are randomly dropped as you farm and only boss maps, maps with the bling, will drop soul shards. You can only farm up to 1000 soul shards per week and activating boost mode will increase soul shard drop rate. Fodder, gold, light crystals and magic crystals are obtained as loot in adventure. Is there any way you can farm a particular resource much faster? Yes, we have hard time which is a 4 hour window with increased drop rate. The 4 hour countdown happens real time once activated even if you are not in the game. World 1 to 7 offer increased gold drop rates on weekdays while on weekends offer increased fodder drop rates. World 8 for gold, world 9 for jewels, world 10 for accessories, world 11 for items, world 12 for pets, world 13 for heroes and fodder, and world 14 for magic crystals. Any other way you can farm much faster? Well, there is another small trick to this and that is to farm with a full inventory so that only gold or fodder or soul shards or elements will drop. And you can even tweak your auto sell settings so that there will be no auto selling of items to keep your inventory full so that you can maximize the drops in that limited period of time. So out of the large variety of maps, which should you be farming in? Here are my recommendations, 4-5 and 5-5, 6-10, 8-20, 13-1, 13-5 and 14-1. 4-5 and 5-5 are the regular fast farming maps because there are only 2 stages per run. These maps are found on Asgar and offer very good fodder variety which is important to help you sustain your farming for a long duration. The two best farmers here are Winter Noho and Awaken Yonhi. Not Mythical Awaken Yonhi, just Awaken Yonhi. So do check the gear and skill setup I have included on the screen to help you set your hero accordingly. These ladies have the same passive skill where they will trigger an AoE boom every third attack and they can also target two enemies with their basic attack, making the farming process here very efficient and fast. Awaken Yonhi and Noho are also the preferred farmers for all the subsequent maps except 610. 820 is a map which has the same setup but here you will be primarily farming for gold and even though it says here you can obtain a variety of fodder, more often than not you will get 85% hamsters and cats. So even though it's extremely profitable to farm here for gold, you will lack a variety of fodder and the issue with this is that your ruby farming will not be the most efficient because you may end up leveling only one fodder. So remember to always change maps once every hour or 2 hours and if you use hot time here, an hour of farming can get you around 1 million gold. 
13.1 and 13.5 are good maps for extra fodder. Over here, you not only get tons of hamsters and cats, you also get dragons and phoenixes. But why did I specify 13.1? 13.1 is sometimes preferred to limit drops to only fodder because if you farm in 13.5, you not only get fodder, you also get a good drop of soul shards. Why is this a bad thing? Because it just means within the same duration of farming, you probably will get less fodder in 13.5 than in 13.1. So what some players do is that they farm in 13.1 during hot time and then farm in 13.5 outside of hot time. Also, light crystals may drop in map 13 but the drop rate is pretty low. I realize they tend to drop more after the soul shark weekly limit has been reached. Again, the best farmers here are Yonhi and Noho. 14.1 is the only place where you can farm for magic crystals and it is preferred over 14.5 due to the easiness of it and the lack of annoying immortal heroes. Unfortunately, you don't earn soul shards here, but that can be a good thing because you have more chance to get magic crystals. Another unfortunate thing is that there will be absolutely zero chance of fodder drops, which means there is no way to farm in world 14 non-stop. You have to prepare a good amount of fodder before farming here. Due to the different number of enemies per stage, do take note of a different skill queue used here for safety. I prefer using an AoE in the second phase even though the runs may be faster if Yonhi just used two speed attacks. You will realize sometimes she doesn't and your runs will be unnecessarily extended. <laughs> Also, I ran a test and had about 26 magic crystals after 43 minutes of farming on hot time. Not exactly the best, I would say, but it is what it is. I also ran out of fodder just after 43 minutes. I had about 50 to 60 fodder ready prior to this. And last but not least, 610. This is the map I personally farm daily for soul shards and you should always use your 100 boost mode runs here because you can easily get about 100 to 130 soul shards within these runs. There are 3 stages for this map so you cannot use Awaken Yonhi and Noho because their skill set makes it very inefficient and long. So the best farmers here are Nox and Cleo. Nox is the hero that is the most straightforward to use because the targeting on his skills are perfect. While Cleo is the faster farmer and also hits AoE for both skills but will require specific gear. Both Nox and Cleo will prefer free status resistance so that your farming can run smoothly. So just to quickly answer two questions you may have. For maps with two difficulties, especially World 8 and beyond, should you farm in easy or normal difficulty? Always always farm in easy, a life doesn't need to get any harder and you save a lot more keys. Should you farm in just one map? My answer is no. It's always good to visit different maps every 1-2 to two hours so you have different types of fodder leveling up. You won't want to have a situation where you are only left with one type of fodder and only one can be on the team at one time. So how should you set your adventure settings for a good farming experience? Under auto settings, you will see that you have many things to set. The most important one would be to enable auto replacement for continuous farming. There are additional settings at the top for you to choose what heroes are prioritized during the replacement. Remember to also select the positions where the fodders should be swapping into. Leave the box with your farmer untouched. For the auto settings on the left, these are entirely up to your preference. For myself, I chose to activate all. The more important ones are the bottom three. For the second option, many players often feel that it isn't worth purchasing keys with rubies because you are farming to earn rubies, so why spend them again? The reality is that you can still profit as long as you have a good amount and variety of fodder. I'm proof that this works, but always remember to have a variety of fodder. The third option is very very important to turn on. This will ensure that farming will stop once you have no more fodder to level up so you will not end up overspending and wasting keys. The fourth option is to make your life easier because you do not have to manually transfer fodder from your temporary storage to the main inventory and let the system do it automatically. So I think this is beneficial. 
Next, we have Auto Cell and Auto Power Up. Again, these settings are entirely based on your preference. Auto Cell helps you prevent your inventories from clogging up, and for myself, I mainly sell pathetic pets, low rank items, jewels, and accessories which I do not need. Heroes should not be sold at all. For Auto Power Up, I'm currently using these settings. The reason is because I still like to have some manual control over my inventory. There are times where I like to perform reverse power up. You may have heard me mention this before. This involves using the least possible number of heroes to power up a hero, which will sometimes mean using higher rank heroes to power up lower rank ones. The reason for this is to generate more fusion pairs to get more fodder. Now imagine you have 4 4 star heroes, 8 3 star heroes and 16 2 star heroes. In a regular power up, you will use 7 2 star heroes to power up 1 3 star hero. And then possibly fusing these 2 3 star heroes to get one new 4 star hero. And in this situation, we are clearing tons of inventory space but only generating one new fodder for 3 rubies. However, in reverse power up, we will use one 4 star hero, one 3 star hero, and one 2 star hero to hit the max power up of 500%. So you will realize by doing this method, you not only save gold, but you will also be having more power up heroes available for fusions, and as long as you have more fusions, you will get more level 1 heroes, and hence, more rubies can be earned. I will recommend this mainly for 3 star and 4 star heroes only, and most of the time I will simply do what you are seeing on screen now to save time. 5 star heroes should either be ranked up or fused to get 6 star heroes for a mythical power up. After all these talk about how to farm, we need to talk about accumulating fodder for farming. Every day you get 22 free fodder from unknown area, 11 from the free 10 plus 1 multi summon every 24 hours, 3 from chessboard, 3 from daily quest, 3 from free 1 to 5 star hero summon every 8 hours, 5 from watching ads, and 2 to 3 from special dungeons. Level them up and that's 150 guaranteed rubies for you daily. You can also buy fodder and elements with castle rush points, you can do fusions, you can use 250 honor to get 11 fodder at the normal gacha, and always remember to bulk rank up elements from 2 star onwards to get more fodder to level up. How long should you farm in adventure? As a newer player, I strongly advise you to farm for gold and fodder first. If you have watched my beginner's guide and new returning player's extra guide, you will know you can already get the essential heroes from selectors for free, so you should focus your time on gold, soul shard and fodder farming so that you can quickly mythical awaken and mythical power up your heroes. Progressing players should focus on ruby farming and magic crystals because these can allow you to do better in PvP. Gold may also be needed from time to time, but I'm sure as a progressing player, you have alternative sources of gold, for example, selling special heroes. And whether you are a new or veteran player, farming in raid is pretty much a must do daily now. Spend maybe an hour for each raid if you can afford it, and always clear the auto complete for sure. The best scenario is if you can get 5 extra raids from each raid per day, and that is the maximum possible allowed, but I know this is very time consuming. So that was a lot of detail about actual farming, but that won't make sense to a player who doesn't have time to farm at all, isn't it? So if you are a player who can't afford the time or device to farm long hours, there are some tips for you to still be able to progress. The first is to always do your auto adventure clears. Auto adventure lets you farm and get resources from a map of your choice automatically with one click. You only have 100 attempts per day. Make sure you have inventory space so that this can be done easily. The best world to auto complete is none other than world 14 now due to the sheer difficulty in obtaining magic crystals. Apart from that, world 8 is also good if you desperately need gold. All other maps are not very worth it at the moment. If you are someone who has only maybe 1 to 2 hours to farm instead of 4 hours or more, you should prioritize your farming in 610 with boost mode for soul shards or 820 for gold using the appropriate farmer. You can even turn on hot time since you can't farm that long anyway. So that is all I have for farming in 7 nights. I hope it has answered most of the questions you have had for farming. And if not, do leave your question in the comments and watch the other videos in the farming playlist. Do like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much and see you!